So today I want to talk about how you handle the request that's coming into your express built web server. So I've got my starter file here. I'm requiring uh, requiring express. I'm creating my app object with the express function and I'm listening, but I don't have anything else set up. So I'm going to do my npm init to create my package.json with the defaults. And then I need to, as always, install express to have that and we'll save it. There we go. So now I've got Express. Now I can actually run the server. So if I say node app.js, okay, it runs. Great. Now, what we're going to do in here, I will close all this stuff so we can focus on the code. Uh, I need to start putting in some routes. Now, the app object has methods for all the HTTP verbs. And when you make a request from a web server or from Postman or from an app, there's always going to be a method. Now, this method is going to be typically get, post, put, patch, or delete. But it could be a couple of other things as well. There's also options and head. And there's a few others that are rarely used when we're doing APIs or we're building websites. But if you ever want to know what the full list is, you can bring in the built-in HTTP module that comes with node. So if you require HTTP, we can say console.log HTTP dot methods. And this will actually give us the full array of all the available ones. So I'm just going to comment out my app.get line here because it's not complete. So this is just to show you what all the possible methods are. There we go. So you can see there, there are quite a few. But there's seven that we're going to be using on a regular basis. Delete, get, head, uh, options, post, patch, put. I think that was all of them, the all seven. But in any case, you can always get them as a reference with HTTP methods. Or if you want to get the HTTP status codes, if you're wondering what those status codes are, instead of looking them up online, we can come in here. And run this again, and there we go. Here's a list of all the HTTP status codes. So we've got requests that are coming from the browser. We'll just say it's coming from the browser to our web server. The web server is getting that request object from the browser. Inside of there, there's going to be a method to say, hey, I'm using get or post or put or patch, whatever it is. This is the method that I'm using. There's going to be headers. So if you want to find out what the headers are, that is something that we can see in Express. We don't have to go to the core objects. Inside of our app get method, let me shut this down. There we go. With the get method, this is just one of the verbs. If I wanted to do post, all the verbs have their own uh, method name. So the get method, this will handle get requests. This will handle post requests for this URL, for this endpoint. Now inside of here, we're going to have our request and response objects. And this is the request that this video is all about. This request object that's coming in, how do we look at it? How do we get at the data that's inside of it? I want to know inside of the request, what is those headers that we were talking about. So let's just do a console.log for that. We'll write that out. And res I'm just going to send back a 404 error regardless of what happens, what, uh, what we get. We'll go to the browser to make this request so we can see this coming up. Let's open up our terminal again, clear that out, run it once more. There we go, it's listening. Now, we want to trigger this bit of code running. So we have to actually make a get request for the root. So we'll jump over into our browser and we will ask for HTTP localhost 3000. There we go, there's our 404 error coming back. HTTP error 404. Now, 
it is here. It did work. Because we can see right here, we were listening on port 3000, and here are the headers. So this is the header object. This is all the information that the browser sent to us in the request. That was the host. It's the domain name and the uh, port number used. Connection, do not track is set to one. Upgrade insecure requests, yes. Change it from HTTP to HTTPS. The user agent, you can see I was on Macintosh, yes. I was using Chrome 79. Except these are all the different MIME types that the browser is willing to accept. So it's willing to take HTML as a response or application XHTML, application slash XML, or you can send images, WEPIs, PNGs, uh, application signed exchange, a whole bunch of different things. And we can actually change that in the browser. If we were making a an AJAX call to the server, we can set some of these headers. We can add our own custom headers and then look for them inside of here. All right, so that's the, the headers part of the request object. There is a lot more that we can get. So I'm just going to console log a whole bunch of them together here. We've got the URL. And let's just copy this a few times. So the URL, we can get the IP address or IPs. There could be several IPs in here. We can uh, get that method that we were talking about. The protocol. So if it's HTTP or HTTPS method, we're going to be having get, but it could be post or something else in our example right here. We're inside of a method get, so it's got to be get that shows up. IP address, URL, uh, the path. That is the path part of the full, everything that would be lit, written in the location bar. So you've got the protocol, you've got the domain name, the subdomain, you've got the port number, you've got the path, the file name, the query string. It's just that path part. So the folders and the file names that people are asking for. Just the path part of the URL. And we can also look at the query. This is the query string. And subdomains. Now this is a plural thing. Because you can have addresses where you have um, test.sales.example.com. Something like this. Example.com. This is our domain name. And then these are the subdomains. Everything that comes in front of that. These are the subdomains right here. So we could have test and sales come back. That's what this subdomains would give us. It's an array that has multiple values inside of there. Now, one more here, query. This one's a useful one to get values out of the query string, especially with get. But one other that you will use quite a bit. So I'm going to move this one down to the bottom here, actually. One other that you will use quite a bit is params. Now, this one, very useful because you will have... Uh, requests for things like, hey, give me all the details about user number 72. Or give me all the details for uh, slash product number this. Now, the way we define that up here would be, I'm looking for app get, and I'm going to create a route that says, user and then give me something called id or app.get product slash the product id so if i did one of these two things then i would have rec.params.id in either of these cases this value right here gives us a variable called ID, which will be the 72 or the 234234. So we can reach this. Now, if there are no params being passed in, rec.params will just be an empty object. So you can test to see if there was anything passed in with rec.params, but 
very useful. This is going to help us a lot when we build things like an API with endpoints and you want to say, hey, I need to delete product number 72. I need to update product number five. I need to um, create a new user with a specific ID. I guess you wouldn't create with a specific ID very often, but in any case, this is the value right here. This is that params. So very, very useful property for us to have. And uh, one other I can think of right in here, console.log rec.hostname. That was the other part that we didn't uh, mention here with the IP address. All right, so this is the request object. All the data that we want about the request that's coming in. One thing I didn't mention in here is there's also a body property, rec.body. But to really get value out of it, you need to do some parsing and handling because the data that's coming in, it could be binary data, it could be a JSON object, it could be uh, a bunch of name value pairs with a URL that, that have been URL encoded, uh, so form data. A whole bunch of different ways, but to really be able to access them through the rec.body property, we need to talk about middleware. And that's another video that's coming in the very near future. All right, so I hope that uh, helps you understand what the request object is and all the different things that you can do with the request. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.